In this short video, I want to explain how the Riemann sums are being connected to the integration through the some kind of examples you guys are going to see in your homework and maybe exam problems. So the question here is asking, what is a definite integral for this given limit? And we are working with a limit as n goes to infinity, a sum, that's a sigma notation, for i from 1 to infinity, and then we have a product. 8 over n is multiplied by the square root 1 plus 8i over n squared. Find the dummy variable. Dummy variable here is i. And i is running from 1 to infinity. That will be very helpful if you can figure out this right away. Then find what is going to infinity. n is going to infinity. Here it is. Hmm. So that will give me a couple hints. First, before explaining you how these hints should be used, here's a definition of the definite integral. For the function, we agreed that, I will move it a little bit closer to the example. For the function, we agreed that we will be looking over here and if we are working with a sigma sum where we're adding together all multiplied heights of all the rectangles we're using to approximate the area below the graph from A to B, and all these rectangles using left end point, right end point, or anything middle point, or maybe even different ways. We're multiplying heights using the function, as you remember, we're plugging these points into the function. And we're multiplying bases. So base times height give me a rectangle. A rectangle. And then how many do we have? We want to have infinitely many of them. That's why you see infinity in the notation over here and or over here. Because the more rectangles, the better because at some point they become so thin that they are not rectangles anymore. Basically, they are like lines. And if I can cover all of this area with lines, the area becomes exact. If the area is exact, we're calling this definite integral from a to b, f of x dx. To make infinitely many rectangles, you can either ask n to go to infinity, n will indicate how many bases of rectangles do we have. Infinitely many bases means infinitely many rectangles. Or you can say that the base should shrink to zero because the more rectangles we want to fit from A to B, the thinner they get. So the base goes to zero. Both mean the same thing, infinitely many rectangles. And this is how you work with those examples in your homework. I see it this way. The moment I see a part with I, that's going to be my X. Because in the formula, only x has a counter. You see this dummy variable k? In the original formula, it's k. In this formula, it's i. It doesn't matter. That's why we call it dummy variable. That's a dummy variable i, or in, in the definition example, it's k. Only x has this dummy variable. So the moment I see i over here, I know that this piece in yellow will be my x. So that's going to be my x. Then I like, okay, the square root is my f of x. So this is probably my height of the rectangles, f of x sub i, right? Just like in this formula, here it is. It's a height. I'm showing you at the bottom. This is my height, f of x sub k. Then I can start building the integral. It's going to be integral. And then the function is a square root 1 plus x squared. Because I just told you, whatever has i is my x. What is multiplied by i? 8 over n, right? So 8 over n, probably my x. And it's, then it's squared, so it's squared there. That's my function f of x. 8 over n is my base. There's only one thing left in this product, height times base. So the base is 8 over n. What does it mean? 
If you remember, when we're asking you to use uh, 12 rectangles or a million rectangles, we take the, we use the formula b minus a over n, and that gives you delta x. Delta x is basically a step size or a base of each rectangle, right? So in this case, it's 8 minus 0, that's why you don't see 0 in the formula, over n. This indicates that b is 8, and I can put it in the integral, and a is 0. It also tells me that just like in this formula, just like in this formula, delta x becomes dx. And that's exactly how the notation of the integral was created. Delta x basically becomes dx at the end of the integral. 8 over n is my delta x. And that's why I'm going to complete this integral with dx. So let's carefully review. Delta x was 8 over n, that's 8 minus 0 over n. That told me that the interval of the function was from 0 to 8, and we divided this by n uh, rectangles. And then to make infinitely many rectangles, n was set to go to infinity, see, to infinity over here. So that makes sense. This is the input of each um, partition, which means it's a base of each rectangle. The height of the rectangle comes from the function f of x, right? Remember? And uh, for example, here, then how to know where which part is the function? The height tells me what is the function. And the height in this case was a square root 1 plus input squared. So I wrote it down, square root 1 plus x squared. And this is the answer. Integral of, integral from 0 to 8, a square root of 1 plus x squared, that's my f of x, and then dx. Hopefully it was not too confusing. And uh, I know all these definitions are always put students in the position that you feel confused about this or not very confident. But I promise you, the more you work with these notations and the more you read all of these notations through, the better you understand them. So don't skip them and actually try to understand what are all those little notations like this star means. What is delta x sub k means? What is this delta goes to zero means? The more you understand, the more literature literate you become with mathematical notation. Mathematical notation is an international language and you will feel very proud when you travel to the international conference or internship and you will be able to use this notation with people that do not speak your language, but they speak mathematical language. Good job for watching. See you next time.